fellow citizens, this is lawyer Abubakar Kaloko, senior member of the All People's Congress Party and leader of the indomitable Kaloko movement. Today, I wish to bring to your attention a matter of national significance which must attract the attention of every well-meaning citizen of our beloved nation. But before I do, please permit me to congratulate the President and his government for successfully implementing the free education project all around our nation. The President deserves accolades for being laser focused on strengthening the human resource base a country so badly needs for development. The strength of every nation's future depends on how educated her citizens may be. Diamonds do not last forever, human beings do. So thank you Mr. President. Fellow citizens, I learned today that the House of Parliament published proposed salary increases for members of Parliament. Based on my reading of the document published by the House, the following increases have been proposed. Ordinary members of Parliament should receive a basic monthly salary, a salary of 37 million leons, a vehicle allowance of 13 million leons per term, medical allowance of 5,000 United States dollars annually, constituency outreach allowance of 6 million leons a month, rent allowance of 20,000 United States dollars per year, personal staff of five people answerable to the member of parliament but to be paid by the government of Sierra Leone, a fuel subsidy of 45 liters a week, sitting fees of 1.6 million leons monthly, and a wardrobe allowance of 5,000 United States dollars per term recess allowance of 37 million leons and the deputy speaker a salary proposed of 50 million leons a vehicle allowance not stated simply said to be maintained god knows what the number is a medical allowance of 10,000 united states dollars annually a rent allowance of 30,000 united states dollars per year personal staff of 10 people answerable to the deputy speaker but to be paid by the government of Sierra Leone. A fuel subsidy of 45 liters per week, sitting fees of 2 million leons a month, a wardrobe allowance of 10,000 United States dollars per term, a recess allowance of 50 million leons, a responsibility allowance of 5 million leons, whatever that means. The Speaker of Parliament, a proposed monthly salary of 70 million leons, Vehicle allowance it says to be maintained, God knows what the number is. A medical allowance of 20,000 United States dollars annually. A yearly rent allowance of 40,000 United States dollars. Personal staff of 10 people answerable to the speaker, but to be paid by the government of Sierra Leone. A fuel subsidy of 45 liters per week. Sitting fees of 3 million leons per month. A wardrobe allowance of 10,000 United States dollars per term, recess allowance of 70 million leons, and an impress of 15 million leons per week, whatever that means. Fellow citizens, you all will agree with me that these figures are not only alarming, they are extraordinary, unconscionable, fiscally irresponsible, out of line, and simply wrong. This government campaigned on employing sound fiscal management policies so as to reduce our country's ballooning deficit, reduce the extremely high and skyrocketing public debt, reduce the government's wage bill, manage out of control and frivolous spending, diversify the economy, impose tighter controls on wastage, and close loopholes on revenue leaks. The president and leadership of this government must not allow itself to earn a failing grade in all of the lofty ideals which they campaigned on and trumpeted around the country. It is my wish that the president succeeds for the sake of our country. Allowing parliamentarians who are yet to prove the worth of their offices to precipitously and outrageously increase their salaries at a time when our country is struggling to pay for its flagship free education project is beginning to demonstrate that this government is lackluster in its attitude towards controlling wastage 
and implementing fiscally responsible strategies so as to reduce poverty amongst our populace. This parliament of ours has yet to pass a single meaningful bill since their election. No doubt, there are myriad social and economic challenges facing our nation today, which one would have expected responsible lawmakers to spend their time researching and finding pragmatic and mundane solutions so as to alleviate the pain our suffering masses are enduring. There are issues surrounding public financial management, citizenship, a crumbling national education system, old and failing infrastructure, land tenure, local government, law enforcement, justice, diplomacy, and many more issues of national significance which this parliament should have been debating by now. Unfortunately, our members of parliament have been spending more time socializing than engaging in meaningful activities for which we elected them. Many have even forgotten that they are not in parliament to represent their own interests, but to represent people in their various constituencies and to champion their constituents' causes. Of particular note, ladies and gentlemen, is that our parliamentarians sought to pay themselves wages and allowances using another country's currency. Our members of parliament must realize that Sierra Leone does not use United States dollars as our national currency. To tag payments of any kind in a foreign currency in itself epitomizes a fundamental lack of respect for a national icon, the Leone, which us responsible citizens hold near and dear to our, our hearts no matter its value in the international currency exchange market. The Leone is a national symbol which every citizen must respect and for our lawmakers to trash it in favor of another country's currency is shameful. Members of parliament, please realize that our teachers are the most poorly paid in the world. Your wardrobe allowance alone as proposed could pay 10 teachers for an entire year our doctors and nurses are some of the lowest paid in the world, yet we expect them to perform miracles in our hospitals. Our hospitals lack beds and equipment required to provide the most basic medical care to our citizens. Our people lack abundant and safe drinking water, which is probably responsible for all the public health emergencies a country has experienced over the past couple decades. Quality emergency medical care is practically non-existent in our country. Ambulances are parked since the government cannot afford the cost of purchasing replacement parts. Ultimately, the ordinary citizen pays a high price for the lack of good medical care whilst you, members of parliament, provide thousands of dollars for your own medical needs. And most of you will be seeking medical care abroad because you do not believe in the medical system existing in your own country. How about the people you claim to represent? I guess they can die if they so choose. Our schools are overcrowded. Our children go to school hungry. Textbooks are not enough. Children do not have enough chairs and desks to sit on. School buildings need to be expanded as the ancient ones constructed over 50 years ago can no longer handle the population growth. Our colleges and universities are ranked amongst the worst performing in the world. Lecturers and professors are poorly paid. There is a brain drain our country, in our country which needs to be urgently arrested. Our good physicians and engineers, surveyors, computer experts, lawyers are living en masse seeking greener pastures. We need them if our efforts to foster growth and development are to bear any fruit. What has this parliament done to encourage them to stay? These are issues members of parliament must be focused on as opposed to filling their pockets with tons of cash at this time. Members of parliament, this is no time to focus on being wealthy. This is time for restraint and understanding from all of you. Our country is bleeding and utterly poor. This is no time for you to be taking more money from our national coffers. We need the money. This is time for you to sacrifice even the little you have so our children may receive quality education. So our, your constituents may have safe drinking water. 
So they may have quality, not counterfeit drugs. So your constituents may have good health care. Our national infrastructure is falling apart. The Siaka Stephen Stadium is now a death trap and badly in need of repairs. Before you approve of this new hefty salary of yours, members of parliament, think about the Mabele Bridge, the Mabang Bridge, the Tengba Town Bridge, the upgone Bome. UE building is in shambles. The bathrooms don't work. Those are areas members of parliament need to focus on and address rather than seek to clear the consolidated revenue fund and line their pockets. Members of parliament, our tax code needs revising so as to lower barriers to entry in business. Investors are running away from our economy as a result of our very high taxes. Our judicial and legal system needs serious revamping so as to assure the business community that our courts are in an excellent position to handle and deliver justice in a fair and swift manner. Our main law courts building is an eyesore. Its internal infrastructure is nothing a serious lawyer can be proud of. Our judges are not the best paid in the region. Our policemen, our military, our correction officers, the backbone of our judicial and legal system need appropriate tools to be able to deliver. A single month's salary for a member of parliament as proposed could pay 37 policemen. Ladies and gentlemen, if that is not unreasonable, please tell me what is. Our policemen need batons, tasers, pepper sprays, trucks, they need uniforms, boots, belts, and so do our military and correction officers. Your proposed wardrobe allowance per MP could purchase uniforms for 100 policemen. Members of Parliament, I urge you in the interest of Sierra Leone, and for love for country to withdraw this very unreasonable pay raise you have unanimously approved and work for the people who hired you our people are the ones who need the money most not you some of your constituents can't even afford a single meal a day please give them a chance to live we need the money to buy rice so they may eat fellow citizens i have issued this statement to urge his excellency president julius marabio to intervene and restore fiscal discipline in parliament. I also urge the president to remind our members of parliament that they have a solemn duty to represent the people of Sierra Leone, not themselves. Please, Mr. President, do whatever you could within your power to reject this unnecessary and wasteful pay raise. I also call on the Honorable Speaker of Parliament to show leadership and demonstrate to the people of Sierra Leone that he is there to lead and not to become rich. Long live the All People's Congress, and long live the Republic of Sierra Leone.